Sir, master. Come, the mariners. Fall too quickly or we'll run ourselves aground. Hey, my hearts, quickly, quickly now. My hearts, take in the top sail. Listen for my master's whistle. Blow till thou burst thy wind, if room enough. Rosen, where's the master? I pray you now, keep below. Where is the master, Rosen? Do you not hear him? You stole our labor. Keep to your cabins. You do assist the storm. Be patient. When the sea is hence, these roaring waves care nothing for the name of queen. Sir. Son, to your cabins, trouble us not. Remember whom thou hast to board. None that I love more than myself. Out of our way, I say. Down with the top mast, quickly. Lower, lower, bring her to try with the main sail. My dearest mother, you have put the wild waters in this roar, allay them. The sky, it seems, would pour down stinking pitch. Oh, I have suffered with those that I have so suffered. A brave vessel who had no doubt some noble creatures in her dashed to all pieces. Their cries did knock against my very heart. Had I have been any god of power, I would have sunk the sea below the earth, but for it should have swallowed the good ship and the frotting souls within her. Be collected. No more amazement. Tell your piteous heart there's no harm done. But did that no see the- No harm. I have done nothing but in care of thee, of thee my dear one, thee my daughter, who art ignorant of what thou art. Wipe thou thine eyes, have comfort. The direful spectacle of the wreck, which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee. I have, with such provision in my art, ordered that there is no soul, no, not so much perdition as a hare, but did to any creature in the vessel, which thou heardst cry, which thou saw sink. Thou must now know further. You have often begun to tell me of what I am, but stopped and left me to a fruitless inquisition, concluding no, not yet. The hour is now come. Obey and be attentive. Canst thou remember a time before we came unto this cell? I do not think thou canst, for then thou wast not yet three years old. Certainly, Mum, I can. Of what? A house or a person? Tis far off and rather like a dream than a remembrance that my assurance warrants. Had I not four or five women that tended me? Thou hadst, and more, Miranda. But how is it that this lives in thy mind? What remembers thou else in the dark backward and abysm of time? If thou remembers time ere thou came here, 
how thou came here thou must, but that I do not. Twelve years since, Miranda, twelve years since, thy mother was Duchess of Milan and a princess of power. Mom, are you not my mother? <laughs> I, thy mother, was Duchess of Milan, and her only heir and princess, no worse issued. Wherefore had we that we came from thence, or blessed was we did? Both, both, my girl. By foul play, as thou sayest, were we heaved thence, but blessedly helped hither. My heart bleeds to think of the teen I have turned you to. My sister, and thy aunt, called Antonia, I pray thee, mark me, that a sister should be so perfidious. She whom next thyself of all the world I loved, and to her put the manage of my state, as at that time in all of Italy it was the best, and Prospero the prime duchess, being so reputed in dignity and in the liberal arts without a parallel, the government I cast upon my sister, and to my state grew stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. Thy false aunt, dost thou attend me? Mom, most heedfully. Thy aunt, who'd perfected how to grant offices, how to deny them, who to advance, and who to fire for overreaching, knew created the people who were mine. I say, or changed them, or else new formed them. Having both the key of officer and office, set all hearts in the state to what tune pleased her ear. And thou attendst not. I do. I pray thee, mark me. I, thus neglecting worldly ends, all dedicated to loneness and the bettering of my mind, awaked in my sister an evil nature. And my trust, like a good parent, did awaken in her a confidence, sans bound. She did believe she was indeed the Duchess. Dost thou hear me? Your tale, Mom, could cure deafness. To have no screen between this part she played and her she played it for, she now becomes absolute Milan. And me, poor soul. My library was dukedom large enough. She plans, desperate for power, with the Queen of Naples, to do her annual tribute. Give her homage, subject her coronet to her crown, and bend the dukedom, yet unbowed, alas, poor Milan, to most ignoble stooping. Mark her condition and the event, then tell me if this might be a sister. I should send to think but nobly of my grandmother. Good wombs have borne bad daughters. Now the condition. This queen of Naples, being an enemy to me inveterate, hastens my sister's suit, and presently extirpates me and mine out of the dukedom, and confers fair Milan with all the honors on my sister. Whereon, a treacherous army levied, one the night fated to the purpose, did Antonia open the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness, her ministers for the purpose hurried thence, me and thy crying self. Alack, for pity, I, not remembering how I cried out then, will cry it over again. It is a hint that rings my eyes to it. Here a little further, and I'll bring thee to the present business which now's upon. Without the which, this story were most impertinent. Wherefore did they not that hour destroy us? Well demanded, girl. My tale provokes that question. Dear, they dared not, so dear the love my people showed to me. In brief, they hurried us aboard a skiff, bore us some leagues to sea, where they prepared us a rotten carcass of a ship, not rigged, nor tackle, sail, nor mast. The rats instinctively have quit it. There they left us, to cry to the sea that roared to us then. What trouble was I then to you? Oh, thou wast the one who did preserve me. Thou didst possess a fortitude from heaven. How came we here? By providence divine? Some food we had, and some fresh water, that a noble Neapolitan Gonzala, out of her charity, did give us, with fresh garments, linens, stuffs, and necessaries, which since have studded much. So, of her gentleness, knowing I loved my books, 
she furnished me from mine own library with volumes that I prize above my dukedom. Now, hear the last of our sea sorrow. Here on this island we arrived, and here have I, thy schoolmaster, made thee more profit than other princesses can, who have more time for vainer hours and tutors not so careful. Heavens, thank you for it. And now, mum, the question for still tis beating in my mind, your reason for raising the sea storm? Know thus far forth. Bountiful fortune, now my dear lady, have mine enemies brought to this shore. Here, cease more questions. Thou art inclined to sleep. Tis a good dullness, and give it way. I know thou canst not choose. Come away, servant, come. I am ready now. All hail, great master, grave ma'am, hail. I come to answer my best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds, to thy strong bidding task, Ariel and all her quality. Hast thou, spirit, performed to the point the tempest that I bade thee? To every article. I boarded the queen's ship, now in the prow, now in the hold, the deck, in every cabin I flamed amazement. Sometimes I divide and burn in many places, on the topmast yards and bowsprit would I flame distinctly, then meet and join. All but the mariners plunged in the foaming brine and quit the vessel, then all afire with me. The queen's son, Ferdinand, with hair upstanding, then like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leaped, crying, Hell is empty and all the devils are here. Why, that's my spirit. But are they, Ariel, safe? Not, not a hair perished. perished on their sustaining garments not a blemish, but fresher than before. And, as thou bathest me, in groups I have dispersed them about the isle. The queen's son have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air with sighs in an odd angle of the isle, and sitting, his arms in this sad knot. Of the queen's ship, the mariners, say how thou hast disposed. And the rest of the fleet? Safely in harbor is the queen's ship. In the deep nook where once thou caused me up at midnight to fetch dew from the Sovex Bermudas, there she's hid. The mariners, all under hatches, stowed and left fast asleep. And for the rest of the fleet, which I have dispersed, they have all met again, and are upon the Mediterranean Sea bound safely home for Naples, supposing that they saw the queen shipwrecked and her great persons perish. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed. But there's more work. What is the time of the day? Past the mid-season. At least two glasses. The time twixt six and must now by us both be spent most preciously. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which, which is not yet performed me. How now? Moody, what is it thou canst command? My liberty. Before the time be out? No more. I prithee, remember I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies, made thee no mistakings, served without nor grudge nor grumblings. Thou didst promise to give me a full year. Dost thou forget from what a torment I did free thee? No. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch Sycorax? Hast thou forgot her? No, no. ma'am. Thou hadst. Where was she born? Speak, tell me. Ma'am in Algiers. Oh, was she so? I must once in a month recount what thou hast been, which thou forgets. This damned witch Sycorax, this blue-eyed hag, was hither brought with child, and here was left by the sailors. Thou, my slave, as thou reports thyself, was in her servant, and as thou was a spirit too delicate to act her earthy and abhorrent commands, refusing her grand hests, she did confine thee into a cloven pine, within which rift imprisoned thou didst painfully remain a dozen years, within which space she died and left thee there, where thy groans did vent as fast as mill wheels strike. Then was this island, save for the child that she did litter here, a freckled whelp, hag born, not honored with a human shape. Yes, yes. Caliban, her daughter. Dull thing, I say so. 
that Caliban whom now I keep in service. Thou best knowst what a torment I did find thee in. Thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breasts of ever angry bears. It was a torment to lay upon the damned, which Sycorax could not again undo. It was mine art when I arrived and heard thee that made gape the pine and let thee out. I thank thee, master. If more thou murmurst, I will rend an oak and peg thee in his naughty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, Pardon master, master, I will be the correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently. Do so, and after two days, I will discharge thee. That's, That's my, my noble master. master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Go make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine. Awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well. Awake. The strangeness of your story put heaviness in me. Shake it off. Come on, we'll visit Caliban, my slave. Tis a villain, Mom, I do not love to look upon. But as tis, we cannot miss her. She does fetch in our wood, make our fire, and serve in offices that profit us. Slave, Caliban, thou earth, thou, speak. There's wood enough within. Come forth, I say. There's other business for thee. Thou poisonous slave got by the devil himself, come forth! As wicked do as e'er my mother brushed with raven's feather from unwholesome ground, drop on you both! A southwest blow on you and blister you all over! For this, be sure, tonight thou shalt have cramps, side stitches that shall pen thy breath up. Urchins shall forth at length of night that they may work all exercise on thee. Thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycomb, each pinch more stinging than bees that made them. I must eat my dinner. This island is mine, by Sycorax, my mother which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, thou strokest me, made much of me, wouldst give me water with berries in it. And I loved thee, and showed thee all the qualities of the island. The fresh springs, brine pits, barren place and fertile. Cursed be I that did so. All the spells of Sycorax, toads, beetles, bats, light on you. For I am all the subjects that you have, which first was my own queen. And here you sty me in this hard rock whilst you do keep from me the rest of the island. I have used thee, slave, filth as thou art, with humane care, and lodged thee in mine own cell till thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. I pity thee, took pains to make thee speak. When thou didst not, savage, know thine own meaning, but would gabble like a thing most brutish, I endowed thy purposes with words and made them known. You taught me language. My prophet aunt is, I know how to curse. The red plague rids you for learning me your language. Hag seed, hence. Fetch us in wood and be quick. Shrugs thou, monster. If thou neglect or dost unwillingly what I command, I'll rack thee with old cramps, fill all thy bones with aches, and make thee roar. No. Pray thee.
Where could this music be? In the air? In the earth? It sounds no more now. Sitting on a bank, weeping, the queen, my mother's wreck. This music crept by me on the waters. There, it begins again. The fringed curtain of thine eye withdraw, and say what thou seest there. What is it? A spirit? No, girl. It eats, and sleeps, and hath such senses as we have too. This figure which thou seest was in the wreck, and though he's something stained with grief, that's beauty's canker, thou mightst call him a goodly person. He hath lost his people, and strays about to find them. I might call him a thing divine. For nothing natural have I ever seen so noble. It goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. Uh, vouchsafe my prayer may know if you inhabit on this island, and you will give me some good instruction to how I may bear me here. Uh, my prime request, which I do last pronounce, is. Oh. You wonder if you be made or no. No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language? Heavens, I am the best of them that speak it, or but where it is spoken. How? The best? What wert thou if the Queen of Naples heard thee? A single thing as I am now to hear thee speak of Naples. She does hear me, and that she does, for I beheld the Queen, my mother, wrecked. Alack, for mercy. At the first sight, they have changed eyes. Delicate Ariel, I'll set thee free for this. A word, good sir, pray thou attendst me. Thou dost here usurp the name thy own's not, and hast put thyself upon this island as a spy to win it from me, the queen of it. No, as I am a man. There is nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. Speak not you for him, he's a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea water shalt thou drink. Thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels, withered roots, and husks were in the acorn's cradle. Please, you mother! Hence, hang not on my garments. Mom, have pity. I'll be his surety. Silence! One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. What, an advocate for an impostor? Hush! Thou thinks there are no more such shapes as he, having seen but him. Foolish wench. I've no ambition to see a goodlier man. Thy nerves are in their infancy again, and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirit is in a dreamer. All bound up. My mother's loss. The weakness which I feel. The wreck of all my friends. Are like to me. And I but through my prison once a day, behold this maid. It works. Speak not for him. I beg you, ma'am. You have cause, and so have we all of joy. Our escape is much beyond our loss. Our hint of woe is common. Every day some sailor's wife, the masters of some merchants, and the merchant all have just our theme of woe. But for the miracle, I mean our preservation, few and millions can speak like us. Then wisely, good queen, we are sorrow with our comfort. Privy, peace. She receives comfort like cold porridge. Look, she's winding up the watch for wit. By and by it will strike. Ma'am. One. Ah. Therefore, my lady. Fie, what a spendthrift is she of her tongue? My queen. I prithee, stop! Well, I half done, but yet. She will be talking. Which tween she or Francisco for a good wager first begin to squawk? 
Mm. The old cock. The chickadee. Done. The wager. Laughter. Deal. Though this island seems to be desert. <laughs> there, you're paid. Uninhabitable and almost inaccessible. Yet. Yet the air breathes upon us here most sweetly. As if it had lungs and rotten ones. Or if perfumed by a swamp. Here is everything advantageous to life. True, except means to live. I thought there's none or little. How lush and lusty the grass looks, how green. The ground actually is brown. With a touch of green in it. She misses not much. No, but she doth mistake the truth totally. But the rarity of it is, almost indeed beyond credit. As many rarities are. That our garments, being as they were, drenched in the sea, hold notwithstanding their freshness and gloss, being rather new dyed and stained with salt water, methinks our garments are just as fresh as the first day we put them on in Africa. At the marriage of the queen's fair daughter Clarabelle to the king of Tunis, is not, ma'am, my doublet as fresh as the first day I wore it? I mean, in a silver, when I wore it at your daughter's marriage. You cram these words into mine ears against the stomach of my sense. Would I had never married my daughter there, for coming thence my son is lost, and in a way she too, who is so far removed from Italy, I never again shall see her. O oh, thou, mine heir of Naples and of Milan, what strange fish hath made his meal on thee? Ma'am, he may live. I saw him beat upon the surges under him and ride upon their backs. He trod the water whose enmity he flung aside and breasted the surge most swollen that met him. His bolt head above the contentious waves he kept and oared himself to the shore with good arm and lusty stroke. I've no doubt he came alive to land. No, he's gone. Ma'am, you may thank yourself for this great loss. You would not bless our Europe with your daughter, but rather lose her to an African. At least she has vanished from your eye while you wet the grief in it. Privy peace. We have lost your son, ma'am. The fault's your own. So is the dearest of the loss. My lord Sebastian, the truth you speak doth lack some gentleness and time to speak it in. You rub the sore when you should bring the bandage. Very well. It is foul weather in us all, good queen, when you are cloudy. Foul weather? Very foul. Had I dominion o'er this island, my lady, and were queen on it, what would I do? Escape being drunk for one of wine? In the commonwealth, I would, by contrast, execute all things. For no kind of traffic would I admit, no name of magistrate, letters should not be known. Poverty, riches, none. Uh, no use of metal, or corn, or wine, or oil, um, no occupation, none. All men idle, all, and woman too, but innocent and pure, uh, no sovereignty. And she would be queen in it. The latter end of her commonwealth forgets the beginning. No marrying among her subjects. None, man, all idle, whores and knaves. I would with such perfection govern, ma'am, to excel the golden age. Save her majesty. Long live Gonzala. Do you mark me, ma'am? Prithee, no more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. I do well believe your highness, and did it to minister these occasions, that these gentlewomen who are of such sensible and nimble lungs, that they used to always laugh at nothing. Twas you we laughed at. You are a gentlewoman of brave metal. You would lift the moon out of her sphere if she would continue in it five weeks without changing. Nay, good, my lord. Be not angry. Will you laugh me to sleep, for I am very heavy? Go sleep and hear us. What, all so soon to sleep? I wish mine eyes would with themselves shut up my thoughts. I find they are inclined to do so. Please you, ma'am, do not omit the heavy offer of it. It seldom visits sorrow, and when it does, it is a comforter. We too, my lord, will guard your person and watch you safely as you rest. Thank you. Wondrous heavy. What a strange drowsiness possesses them. It is the quality of the climate. Why then not our eyelids sink? I find not myself disposed to sleep. Nor I, my spirits are nimble. What might, worthy Sebastian, what might? 
No more. Yet methinks I see what thou shouldst be. In my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head. What? Art thou awake? Do you not hear me speak? I do, and surely... I am much more serious than my custom. You must be so too. I am standing water. I will teach you how to flow. Prithee, say on. Will you grant me that Ferdinand is drowned? He's gone. Then tell me, who's the next heir to Naples? Clarabelle. She that is queen of Tunis? She that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life. What stuff is this? How say you? Tis true my sister's daughter is queen of Tunis as heir of Naples. Twixt with Trujans there is some space. A space whose every cubit cries out, how will Clarabelle measure us back to Naples? Keep in Tunis and let Sebastian wake. Oh, that you bore the mind that I do. Do you understand me? Did supplant your sister Prospera. True, and look how well my garments fit upon me. My sister's servants were once my fellows, now they are my men. But for your conscience. I, sir, realize that. Here lies your sister, no better than the earth she lies upon. If she were that which now she's like, that's dead, I, with this obedient steel, three inches of it can lay to rest forever, whilst you do the like on this ancient morsel, this Gonzala. For the rest, they'll take suggestion as a cat laps milk. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou gots Milan, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy knife. With one stroke shall free thee from thy tribute. And I, the queen, shall love thee. When I rear my knife, you do the like to fall it on Gonzala. Oh, but one word. My master through her art foresees the danger that you, her friend, are in, and sends thee forth, forth. For else her project dies to keep them living. While you here do snore and lie, open eye conspiracy is time to take. If life, life you keep a care, shake off slumber and beware. Awake. Awake! Awake. Now, good angels, preserve the queen! Why, how now, awake? Why are you drawn? What's the matter? Wherefore this ghastly looking? While we stood here securing your repose, even now we heard a, a, a hollow burst of bellowing like, like bulls, or rather lions. That's not wake you, it struck mine ear most terribly. I heard nothing. Uh, it was a din to fright a monster's ear to make an earthquake. It was the roar of a whole herd of lions. Heard you this, Gonzala? Upon mine honor, ma'am, I heard a humming, and that a strange one too, which did awake me. I shaved you, ma'am, and cried, and as mine eyes opened, I saw their weapons drawn. It is best we quit this place. Lead off this ground. Let's make further search for my son. Heavens, keep him from these beasts, for he is sure on this island. Lead away. Prospera shall know what I have done. So, Queen, go safely on to seek thy son. that the sun soaks up from bogs, swamps, grass on prosper fall and make her by each one disease. Her spirits hear me. For every trifle are they set upon me, sometimes like apes that shout and chatter at me and then bite me. Then, like hedgehogs, who li which lie tumbling in my barefoot way and then raise their spikes at my footfall. Sometimes am I all wound with vipers who with their cloven tongues do hiss me into madness. Lo now, lo. Here comes a spirit of hers and he'll torment me for bringing wood and slowly. I'll fall flat 
Perchance you will not see me. Ah, another storm brewing. Yon same black cloud, yon huge one. Looks like a drunkard that would spew his liquor. If it should thunder as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. Yon cloud cannot choose but pour by pailfuls. What do we have here? A human or a fish? Dead or alive? A fish. Well, it smells like a fish, but legged like a human? And it's fins like arms? <laughs> and it's warm? I do not let loose my opinion. This is no fish, but an islander that hath lately been struck by a thunderbolt. Alas, oh, the storm has come again. All oh, my best chance is to creep under its blanket here. There is no other shelter hereabouts. Mystery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. I will hide here till the storm be past. Oh, I'm a jolly sailor. The wind will steer me rightly. And when she bites, I'll have a pint. Curse her bloody name. For the sea's me jolly home. And wherever she may take me, I've got me jug, I've got me beer to push me through the storm. I do miss my lovely lady, her lovely friends miss me, but I would give a thousand ladies for my home upon the sea. It's a very scurvy tune to sing at a man's funeral. Ah, uh, well, here's my comfort. Ah, do not torment me. What? Do we have devils? Not escape drowning to be afraid now of your Four legs. The spirit torments me. Ah. So some of the monster of the isle with four legs who has got, I take it, some strange sickness. But where the devil should it learn our language? If I could tame it and get back to Naples with it, it'll be a present for any emperor. I'll bring my wood home faster. He's having some fit now and does not talk sense. Shall taste of my bottle. If it has never drunk wine before, it shall surely cure this fit. Oh, if I could tame it and sell it. And not take too much for it, but surely anyone who take it would pay soundly. Now Prospero works through thee. I know that voice, but, but she's drowned. So thou must be devils. Oh, defend me. Four legs and two voices? Its forward voice now speaks well of her friend. Its backward voice is to utter foul speeches and insult. Stefano? Doth thy other mouth call me? Mercy, this is a devil and no monster. I will leave her. Stefano! If thou be Stefano, touch me and speak to me, for I am Trinculo. Be not afeard, thy good friend Trinculo. Thou art Trinculo. Come forth. I will pull thee by these lesser legs. If any legs be Trinculo's legs, these are they. <laughs> thou art Trinculo indeed. How came that to be thrust from this monster? Can I... it vent Trinculo's? I took it to be killed by a lightning strike. But art thou not drowned, Stefano? I hope thou art not drowned. Is the storm past? I hid me here under the dead devil's cloak in fear of the storm. And art thou living, Stefano? Oh, Stefano, two Neapolitans escaped. <laughs> no more. My stomach is not constant. These be fine things if they be not sprites. That one's a brave god. I will kneel to her. D how didst thou escape? <laughs> Swear by this bottle, how camest thou hither? I escaped upon a barrel of wine in which the sailors heaved overboard, and have survived since by this bottle which I had carved from the bark of a tree with mine own hands since I was cast ashore. I'll swear upon that bottle to be thy true subject. Here. Swear then, how camest thou here? Uh, uh, swim ashore, man, like a duck. What? I can swim like a duck. I'll be sworn. Here, kiss the book. Mm. Oh, is that any more of this? All of it, man. 
Oh. My cellar is in a rock by the seaside where my wine is hid. How now, Mooncalf? How fares thy fit? Hast thou not dropped from heaven? Out of the moon, I do assure thee, I was the woman in the moon when time was. I have seen thee in her, and I do adore thee. Come then, swear to that. Kiss the book. I will furnish it anon with new contents. Swear. I'll show thee every fertile inch of the island, and I will kiss thy foot. I prithee, be my god. <laughs> Most perfidious monster. When her god's asleep, she'll rob her bottle. Shall I kiss thy foot? I'll swear myself thy subject. Come then, down and swear. <laughs> I shall laugh myself to death at this puppy-headed monster. <laughs> I think I can find it in my heart to beat her. I'll show thee the best springs. I'll pluck thee berries. I'll fish for thee and bring thee wood enough. I'll follow thee, thou wondrous woman. Let me show thee where crabs grow. With my long nails I'll dig thee pig nuts, show thee a jay's nest, and instruct thee how to catch the nimble marmoset. Lead the way. Now. And I'm at Without any more talking. With the queen and all her company drowned, we shall inherit all of this. Oh. Here, carry my bottle. <laughs> A howling monster. Okay, monster, lead the way. There be some sports that are painful, and their labor delight in them sets off. This my mean task would be as heavy to me as odious. But the maiden whom I serve wakens with stead and makes my labors pleasures. She is ten times more gentle than her mother's mean, and she's composed of harshness. Here I must move some thousands of these logs, pile them up, lest I be harshly beaten. My sweet mistress weeps when she sees me work, and has said such baseness had never like executor. Pray you, work not so hard. I would the lightning had burnt up these logs you've been made to the pile. Pray, set them down and rest you. When it burns, twill weep for having wearied you. My mother is hard at study. Pray, set them down and rest you. I'll bear your logs the while. Pray, give me that. I'll carry no, it to the pile. No, precious creature. I'd rather break my back, tear my muscles, than such dishonor undergo while I sit idly by. It would become me as well as it does you, and I should do it with much more ease, for my goodwill is to it. And yours it is against. Poor girl. She is infected. You look weary, sir. No, noble mistress. Tis fresh morning for me when you are by at night. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my mother, I have broken your rule to say so. Admired Miranda. Indeed, the top of admiration worth what's dearest to the world. So many a lady have I looked on with regard. For several virtues have I loved several women, but. You, oh, you so perfect and so peerless are created of every woman's best. I do not know one of my sex, no maiden's face remember, saved from my glass, mine own. Nor have I seen more that I may call men than you, good friend. Nor can imagination form such a shape to like of. But I gabble in something too wildly, and my mother dictates I there and do forget. I am in my condition a prince, Miranda. I would think a king. I would not so. The very instant that I saw you did my heart fly to your service. There resides to make me a slave to it. And for your sake am I this patient logman. Do you love me? 
I, beyond all limit of all else in the world, do love, prize him, and honor him. I am a fool to weep at what I am glad of. For weep you. At my own unworthiness, that desire what I long to give, and much less take what I shall die to want. And special cunning, I am your wife, if you will marry me. You may deny me, but I'll die your servant whether you will or not. My mistress, dearest, and I thus humble, forever. My husband, then? <laughs> yes, with a heart as willing to bondage as of freedom. Here's my hand. And mine, with my heart in it. When the wine cellar is empty, we will drink water, not a drop before. Drink, servant monster, when I tell thee to. Ha. Servant monster, you may speak. How does my master? Shall I lick thy shoe? I will not serve him, he is not valiant. Thou liest, most ignorant monster, thou debauched fish. Will thou tell such a monstrous lie, being but half a fish and half a monster? How he mocks me! <laughs> Wilt thou let him, my lord? <laughs> Bite him to death, I pray thee. Drink below the poor monster's my subject, and shall not suffer indignity. I thank my noble master. Wilt thou be pleased to hear again the suit I made to thee? I will be pleased to kneel and repeat it. I will stand. And so shall Trinculo. As I've told thee before, I'm subject to a tyrant, a sorcerer who by her cunning hath cheated me of the island. Thou liest. Thou liest, thou jesting monkey. I would, my valiant master, would destroy thee. I do not lie. Trinculo, if you trouble her any more, by this hand I will supplant some of your teeth. I said nothing. Shush then and no more. Proceed. I say by sorcery she got this isle. From me she got it. And if thy greatness will revenge it on her, for I know thou darest, but this thing dare not. That is most certain. Thou shalt be lord of it, and I'll serve thee. How will this be accomplished? Canst thou bring me to her? Yes. Yes, my queen, I'll show her thee asleep. And thou mayst knock a nail into her head. Thou liest, thou, thou canst, canst not. not. Trinculo, interrupt the monster one word further, and by this hand off- What did I- I did nothing! I'll go further off. Didst thou not say she lied? Thou liest. Do I so? Take thou that! Ow. Ha <laughs> ha! Beat him enough. After a little time, I'll beat him too. Stand further off. Proceed. As I've told thee, tis a custom with her in the afternoon to sleep. There thou mayst brain her, having first seized her books, or with a log batter her skull, or gut her with a stake. Dost thou like the pot, Trinculo? Excellent. Give me thy hand. I'm sorry I beat thee. Monster, I will kill this woman. Her daughter and I will rule the isle together, and Trinculo and myself shall be the viceroys. Thou, thou liest! Are you afeard? No, monster, not I. Be not afeard. The isle is full of noises, sounds, and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will hum about mine ears, and sometimes voices that, if I had waked after a long sleep, will make me sleep again. And in dreaming, the clouds methought thought would open and show riches ready to drop upon me. That when I wait, 
I cry to dream again. This will prove a brave kingdom to me. For I shall have my power for nothing. When Prospera is destroyed. Shall be by and by. I remember the story. Lead, monster. We'll follow. I'll follow Stepano. I can go no further, ma'am. My bones ache. My needs must rest me. I cannot blame thee. I myself am attacked with weariness. And I will put off my hope. He is drowned, whom thus we stray to find, in the sea mocks our fruitless search on land. I let him go. I am right glad she is so out of hope. The next advantage will take thoroughly. Let it be tonight. For now they are overcome with sadness. They cannot nor will not use such vigilance as when they are fresh. I say tonight, no more. My good friends, listen, what harmony is this? Marvelous, sweet music! Now I will believe that they are unicorns. You are three full of sin. sin. Who, who destiny hath caused, caused to belch up you. you. And on this island I have made you mad. Your swords are now too heavy, heavy for your strengths, and cannot be uplifted. But remember, for that's my business to you, to you that you three from Milan did supplant good Prospera, exposed unto the sea, which hath requited her and her innocent child, for which foul deed the powers delaying. Not forgetting, heaven sent the seas and shores, yes, all the creatures against your peace. Thee, thy son, Alonza, they have bereft, and do pronounce through me lingering perdition, worse than any death can be at once. They'll step by step to attend you and your ways. Bravely the figure of this harpy hast thou performed, my Ariel. My high charms work, and these, mine enemies, are all knit up in my distractions. They are now in my power, and in these fits I leave them. In the name of something holy, ma'am, I stand you in this strange stare. Oh, it is monstrous. Methought the billows spoke and told me of it. The winds did sing it to me. In the thunder, that deep and dreadful organ pipe pronounced the name of Prospera. It did call out my wrongs. Therefore my son in the sea is bedded, and I'll seek him deeper than ever plummet sounded, and with him there lie mudded. If I have too austerely punished you, your compensation makes amends. For I have given you here a third of mine own life, or that for which I live, who once again I give o'er to thy hand. All thy vexations were but trials of my love, and thou hast strangely stood the test. Here before heaven, I ratify this my rich gift. O oh, Ferdinand, do not smile at me that I boast of her, for thou shalt find she will outstrip all praise and make it halt behind her. I do believe it, more than you can know. Then, as my son and thine own acquisition worthily acquired, take my daughter. Ceres, most bounteous lady, thy rich lees of wheat, rye, barley, vetches, oats, and peas, where thou thyself dost air the queen of the sky, whose watery arch and messenger am I, bids thee leave these, 
and with her softened grace, here on this grass plot, in this very place, to come and sport. Her peacocks fly amain, approach, rich series, her to entertain. Hail, many-colored messenger, that ne'er dost disobey the wife of Jupiter, who with thy saffron wings upon my flowers diffusest honey drops, refreshing showers, rich scarf to my proud earth. Why hath thy queen summoned me hither to this short grassed green? A contract of true love to celebrate, and some donation freely to estate on the blessed lovers. Highest queen of state, great Juno comes. I know her by her gate. How does my bounteous sister? Go with me to bless this twain that they may prosperous be and honored in their issue. <laughs> Spirits, which by mine art, I have from their confines called to enact my present fancies. Let me live here forever. So rare a wondered mother and a wise makes this place paradise. There's something else to do. I had forgot that foul conspiracy of the beast Caliban and her confederates against my life. The hour of their plot is almost come. Well then, avoid, no more. This is strange. Your mother's in some work of passion that... Never to this day have I seen her so touched with anger so distempered. You look, my son, in a moved sort, as if you were dismayed. Be cheerful, sir. Our revels are now ended. The cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherit, shall dissolve. And like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. <laughs> Sir, I am vexed. Bear with my weakness. My old brain is troubled. Be not disturbed with my infirmity. Mother! We wish you peace. I thank you both. Ariel, come! I thought I could lead you. What's thy pleasure? pleasure? Spirit. We must prepare to meet with Caliban. The trumpery in my house, go bring it hither, for bait to catch these thieves. I go. A devil, a born devil, on whose nature, nurture can never stick, on whom my pains, humanely taken, all, all lost, quite lost. And as with age, her body uglier grows, so her mind cankers. I will plague them all, even to roaring. Pray you tread softly, that the blind mole may not hear a footfall. Thou 
monster your fairy, which you say is a harmless fairy, has done little better than play a trick on us. Monster, I do smell all horse piss, at which my nose is in great indignation. So is mine. Do you hear, monster? If I should take a displeasure against you, look Would you- my lord, give me thy favor still. For the prize I'll bring thee to shall hoodwink this mischance. Therefore speak softly. All's hushed as midnight yet. Yea, but to lose our bottle in the pools? There's not only disgrace and dishonor in that monster, but an infinite loss. For thee, my lord, be quiet. Do that good mischief which may make this island thine own forever. And I, thy Caliban, forever thy foot liquor. I do begin to have bloody thoughts. Oh, Queen Stefano, look at what a wardrobe is here for thee. Let it alone, thou fool, it is but trash. Trico, take off that gown. By the sands, I'll have that gown. Thank Grace, you'll have it. What do you mean to dump us on such luggage? Let's do the murder first. If she awake from toe to head, she'll fill our skins with pinches. Make us strange. Be you quiet, monster. Now is this not my jerkin? <laughs> Monster could put some speed into your fingers and away with the rest. I will have none on't. We shall lose our time and all be turned to barnacles or to apes. Monster, lay to your fingers. Up to bear this where my wine cellar is or I'll turn you out of my kingdom. Go, carry that. Here, carry this. And this. I am this. And this. Let them be hunted soundly. At this hour lies at my mercy all mine enemies. Shortly shall all my labors end, and thou shalt have the air of freedom. Follow and do me service. Now does my project gather to a head. My charms crack not, my spirits obey, and time goes upright with his carriage. How's the day? On the sixth hour. At which time, my lord, you said our work should cease. I did say so, when I first raised the tempest. Say, my spirit, how does the queen and her followers? Confined together in the same fashion as you gave in charge, just as you left them, all prisoners, ma'am. They cannot budge till your release. The queen, her sister, and yours abide all three distracted, brimful of sorrow and dismay. But chiefly, she that you termed, ma'am, the good old lord Gonzala, her tears run down her face like winter's drops from eaves of reeds. Your charm so strongly works them that if ye now beheld them, your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine would, master. Were I human. human. And mine shall. Though with their high wrongs, I am struck to the quick. With nobler reason against my fury do I take part. The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They being penitent, the sole drift of my purpose doth extend not a frown further. Go, release them, Ariel. My charms I'll break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll, I'll fetch them, man.
ye elves of hills, brooks, standing lakes, and groves. By your aid, weak masters though ye be, I have bedimmed the noontide sun, called forth the mutinous winds, and twixt the green sea and the azure vaults at roaring war. To the dread rattling thunder have I given fire, and rifted Joe's stout oak with his own bolt. Graves, at my command, have waked thy sleepers, oped and led him forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I hear abjure. And when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do, to work mine end upon their senses that this airy charm is for, I'll break my staff bury it certain fathoms beneath the earth. And deeper than did ever plummet sound, I'll drown my book. There stand, for you are spell stopped. Holy Gonzala, honorable woman, mine eyes, even sociable to the show of thine, fall fellowy drops. The charm dissolves of hate. My true preserver, and a loyal one to she thou followest. I will pay thy graces home, both in word and deed. Most cruelly didst thou, Alonza, use me and my daughter. You, sister mine, that entertained ambition, expelled remorse and nature. And whom with Sebastian would here have killed your queen? I do forgive thee. If thou beest Prospera, give us the particulars of thy preservation. How thou hast met us here, whom three hours since were wrecked upon this shore. For I have lost how sharp the point of my remembrance is, my dear son Ferdinand. I'm sad for it, ma'am. Irreparable is the loss. And I, the like loss. The like loss? I have lost a daughter. A daughter? Oh heavens, that they were living in Naples, the king and queen there. When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. Howsoe'er you have been jostled from your senses, know for certain that I am Prospera, that very duchess which was thrust forth of Milan, who most strangely upon this shore where you were wrecked was landed to be queen on it. Welcome, ma'am. My dukedom, since you have given me again, I will requite you with as good a thing as much as me my dukedom. This prove a vision of the island. One dear son shall I twice lose. Though the seas may threaten, they are merciful. 
I have cursed them without cause. Now all the blessings of a glad mother compass thee about. I wonder how many goodly creatures are there here. How beautiful mankind is. Oh, brave new world with such people in it. Is this the goddess who hath severed us and brought us thus together? Ma'am, she is mortal. She's daughter of this famous Duchess of Milan, of whom I have heard renown, but never saw before. From whom I've received a second life. And a second mother this lady makes her to me. In one voyage did your daughter, her husband, find at Tunis, and Ferdinand, her brother, found a wife where he thought he was lost, and Prospera, her dukedom on this poor isle, and all of us ourselves, when no man was his own. Be it so, amen. These are not natural events. They strengthen from strange to stranger. We were dead asleep, and how we know not. All clapped under hatches. Where? But even now, with strange and several noises, we were awaked and freshly looked upon our royal good and gallant ship intact. Was well done? Yes, my spirit. You'll be free. Set Caliban and her companions free and bring them here. How fares my gracious queen? There are some yet missing of your company, a few odd ones that you remember not. Mark but the badges of these, my lords, and say if they be true. This misshapen thing, her mother was a witch, and one so strong she could control the moon, make flows and ebbs, these three have robbed me, and this demi-devil, for she's a bastard one, has plotted with them to take my life. Two of these you must know and own. This thing of darkness I acknowledge mine. I shall be pinched to death. Is this not my drunken butler, Stefana? She is drunk now. Where'd she wine hit? In Trinculo! is reeling ripe. Where should they find this grand liquor that hath gilded them? How camest thou in this pickle? Why, how now, Stefana? I'm not Stefana, uh, but a cramp. You'd be queen of the isle, then. I would have been a sore one, then. This is the strangest thing I've ever looked on. She is as disproportionate in her manners as in her shape. Go, servant, to my cell. Take with you your companions. As you look to have my pardon, do it carefully. Aye, that I will. And I'll be wise hereafter and seek for grace. What a thrice double ass was I to take this drunkard for a god and worship this dull fool. No more. Away. Ma'am, I invite your highness and the rest to my poor cell, where you may take your rest for this one night. And in the morn, I'll bring you to your ship, and so to Naples, where I have hope to see the nuptial of our dear beloved, solemnized. I long to hear the story of your life, which must take the ear strangely. My Ariel, chick, that is thy charge. Then to the elements be free and fare thee well.
Now my charms are all o'erthrown, and what strength I have is mine own, which is most faint. Now tis true, I must be here confined by you, or sent to Naples. Let me not, since I have my dukedom got, and pardoned the deceiver, dwell on this bare island by your spell. But release me from my bands with the help of your good hands. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending be despair, unless I be relieved by prayer. As you from crimes would pardoned be, let your indulgence set me free. Thank you.